That's why a lot of you, the prayers are not received. Because you haven't walked in forgiveness, you haven't confessed, and you haven't repented. You haven't been honest with God. So your prayers stink. Amen. Y'all like that. But they do. Y'all be like, I want to smell something sweet. A person with an honest heart always smells good to God. Amen. 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 <coughs> We're so busy chasing anointing, but we are not chasing God. We're so busy chasing anointing, but we're not chasing God. <coughs> Who is more important in your life than God right now? Hmm. What do you serve for than God right now? Who can call you and pick up the phone and you will drop it at any hour of the day? <coughs> wake me right up. You know how God got with me about that? I did. He began to wake me up at 4 a.m. every single night to talk about prayer. Amen. I mean, I'll be like, Lord, what are you waking me up for? Amen. It's time to pray. Pray for who? <laughs> I want to sleep. I'm going to keep waking you up every night. When you start going through that, you know you're getting connected with God. I just got tired of fighting. I just begin to pray. Amen. One day I begin to sleep again. Amen. You know? I'm telling you. Because you don't know it could be anybody in this world that he waking you up for that night. He chose you Amen. to get up and pray for that individual. Amen? Amen. Amen? You may not even know who it is. Well, God, whoever it is, I'm just going to pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. And I'll put it out there. Heal them. Help them. I don't know the circumstance. Amen? Amen? That's why the Bible says we know not how we ought to pray. But we pray with groanings and utterings in the spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, go to Proverbs, no, Galatians chapter 6. So we're chasing anointing more than we're chasing God. And what is that anointing? That anointing can be negative or positive. Are you chasing Christ's anointing? Or are you chasing the anti-Christ's anointing? Because they both need anointing. But one is negative. And you all carry one. Amen. But which one are you chasing? I tell you, the last few weeks, I've been chasing the anti. Didn't even know it. Because I didn't want to do what God told me to do. Because I thought I had the answer. And I didn't. I just didn't. What God wanted me to do was still die to self. You know? I'm getting all these calls about all these wonderful jobs outside of one government. And I'm fighting. You know? The calls I'm getting here, low, low money. But I'm telling you, there are people calling me, offering me some money. But I say, God, is that, am I going to serve you or am I going to serve them? <coughs> Amen. Amen. I choose to serve you. Amen. Amen. Believe me, it ain't easy. <laughs> oh, it ain't easy. Galatians chapter 6. Oh my God. Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. Galatians 6, verse 8. Uh, and it says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap what? A corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap what? Life, Life yeah. everlasting. There it is, people. Amen. There it is. Amen. I ain't got to explain that. Go to Proverbs 14. Come on, we all see the book. Proverbs 14. Verse 12. Proverbs 14, 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So every time you think you're doing it right, see, I just got for the same. You know, I have to put myself to death concerning what God wants, uh, you know, concerning what I want, and do what God wants. Amen. Amen. I always ask you a question. When a blessing is coming your way, God, is this you? I always ask that. I get in the mirror a lot of times and say, it ain't the devil, it's you, Warren. <laughs> you know? And that ain't got nothing to do with it. It's you. Always do a self-examination, people. <laughs> You know, my wife can back up all day long, but I get into the mirror and say, what did I do to cause that woman to act like that? <laughs> what do I got to change, Lord? You need to get in the mirror. What did I do to cause my husband to act like that? Oh, my man. Amen. That man should be looking for you to be his wife one day. Pend and let that, that, that. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 16. 25. There is a way that 
seem to write into a man, but the end there is what? The ways of death. He mentioned it twice. Look at that. Wrote it twice. All right. Number five. Sin always has a paycheck. <coughs> sin always has a paycheck. The boomerang effect, after a while, sin returns on your own head. After a while, it's going to smack, bam, when you sin and it come back and hit you. Boom. How many of you experienced that? They just thought they were living it up. And the same, bam, boom. I know I've been there. <laughs> I know I've been there. <laughs> All right. The only cure for sin is to get humble before God and those that have the rule over you. That's the one they ain't going to like, huh? You need to get humble before God and those that have the rule over you. Oh, uh, man, write down Numbers 20, 32, 23. And it says, Behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Amen. Your sin will find you out. Amen. In Luke 12, 2 through 5, uh, it will talk about, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. That will show you that all truth will come out. I ain't never not seen the truth come out. Truth about my daddy still come out that day. Truth about you will come out even when you're dead. All truth comes out, no matter what. <laughs> Just let you keep talking. It's on the record going to play. And sooner or later, whatever's going on in your life, that phone will come right out to you. Far right. right out there in front of you. Because God will allow it. <laughs> Go ahead. Go to First Timothy now. I'll read this one. We got five more minutes. Wow, I have a lot more for it. We may have to come back. I don't know. First Timothy. Five. Let's not even waste time. First Timothy five. Five. Look at verses uh, twenty-four and twenty-five. Some men sin are open beforehand. Some men sin right out in front of you, <laughs> going before to judgment. And some men they follow after. Likewise, also the good works of some are manifested beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. Amen? And sometimes your sins go right before you. This means that if you confess your sins, they go in front of you, which is good. But woe or judgment be to you if they come in behind you, because it will catch up with you sooner or later. You can't keep doing stuff in secret and think that it won't be revealed. Sooner or later, it will. Amen? Sooner or later, it will. Final one, number six. Sin brings a disgrace. Sin brings a disgrace. Sin messes up that which is good. <laughs> Sin brings a disgrace and it messes up that which is good. Amen? Let's go back to Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14, I'm not going to get too heavy in a lot of things. And we're going to hear a couple of clues on this. Uh, Proverbs 14. 1434. Righteousness. Righteousness exalted. Uh-huh. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is the what? Reproach to any people or shame to any people. Amen. Amen. Why don't you sit that real quick? You pay a price for the anointing by living holy. Stop making excuses for your flesh. You shouldn't be saying you can't help it and you shouldn't be hiding. You shouldn't be saying you can't help it. And you shouldn't be hiding. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hiding is a sign that you have not repented. That's why in the body of Christ we need each other. Don't allow your own anointing to kill you. Samson, his anointing killed him. What was the anointing of Samson? His hair. Yeah. Do y'all know what a Nazarene is? Or a Nazarite? A who? A Nazarite. There's only three of them mentioned in the Bible. A Nazarite couldn't drink wine, they couldn't cut their hair, and they couldn't uh, touch the dead. There was only three mentioned in the Bible. I'm pretty sure there were more, but the three that were Samson, John the Baptist, and Jesus. Because John, the, uh, Samson's anointing was his hair. A hair is a type of anointing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't allow your, your own anointing to kill you, like Samson and Absalom. Absalom was a negative part because his hair got caught up in the, in the trees, and that was David's son, and they came and killed him. But he wasn't a Nazareth. A Nazareth. When you live in sin, you can't claim promises. 
When you live in sin, you can't claim no promise you got. Well, God bless me. Then I talk about that nigga begging for God for money and all this kind of stuff. They ain't got no reason to bless you. If you were living right, you wouldn't even have to ask him. Amen. You can't claim prosperity. You can't claim healing. Because you are sinful. Sin kills. You just got to make up in your mind, you're not going to get high. But we like to sin. We like some of the stuff we're doing, people. Stop worrying about your reputation. Your reputation don't mean beans in the kingdom of God. Some of you, your reputation, or thinking you had a reputation, is the thing that brought you down. I can't go back there. What are they going to think of me? Screw your reputation. Because it ain't never been about you. People need to see real people. If you can't be real with people, there is no ministry. There is no way of helping no one. You've got to be real with people. Am I real with y'all? Yeah. Amen. Ministry is not a piece of paper. Ministry is me getting down at your level. When you see somebody fall, get down on their level and lift them up. Amen. I question some of this anointing I see on people. People that can't walk in the unity are demonic. When you see all the, uh, people always argue man, they don't want to fight and talk against each other, that's demonic. I don't care how much Bible they know. It's demonic. You brothers in here who stand here need to be unified. You should let nobody speak against what's going on in here. The outside people who come here should not know what's going on in here. They shouldn't hear you complaining about Jeffrey. They shouldn't hear you complaining about Lamar. They shouldn't hear you complaining about Rob. Maybe y'all do it amongst yourself, but people come in here, you are setting up what this place is like. <laughs> if I look at you, then I can recognize what leadership is about. <laughs> Amen? We're talking against the people. If you stay here, we're talking against your leaders. We're talking against them. Because guess what? God don't let them know you're talking about leaders. Amen. Amen. I question some of this anointing. It's all demonic. Especially when they can't speak to each other. We got to learn how to wash each other's feet. It's about submission, people. You can tell when you're submitted to God because your level of submission is measured by how you receive correction. And I'm going to stop there. Your level of submission is about how you receive correction. Ladies. Hello. Ladies. And I know ladies don't like to be told what to do a lot of times. That's okay. But how many of you have grown? I see some of y'all been here a while, and I know you have. You've been here a long time. And now you're feeling the blunt of being a leader to a certain extent. I know you have. But guess what? Keep standing. Keep standing. Amen. I'm just going to close with that right there, even though I had a lot more. But this is the type of effects of sin. I hope y'all got something out of it. I know I did. I got to go and get, get the prayer too. But I thank y'all for listening to me. And just let us pray out. Amen. Amen. And I hope y'all agree with me. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus as we talk about the effects of sin. Father, the greatest gift we would like to receive from you this season is more of your spirit. More of your anointing to help us stop the things that we want to do according to our faith. Help us change our minds. Help us change our hearts. Help us change our body, soul, and spirit. Because we need your help, Lord. We can't do it without you. Some people here may need you to get off the throne and help them. To destroy what's going on in the midst of their lives. Some people need to go places. Some people need to go in the program. Some people open up that door for them to do it. Some people just need to submit to leadership. And some people need to just submit to one another. So, Father, I ask that you give them a blessing of any gift that they desire that will not uh, help them to sin, but help them to grow. <laughs> I ask these things, if everybody agree with me, in Jesus' name, say amen. 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 Thank you very much.